Welcome back, everybody. Uh, my name is Mark. I'm from Epic Games in North Carolina, as you can tell from my accent. And today, uh, we're going to talk quickly about um, uh, the journey to real time and how game engine technology will help you actually achieve. We hope to be the enabler and help you achieve what we've seen this morning. Because, you know, the, I was blown away by the, the progress that we're seeing in construction technologies and in architecture and fabrication. So I think you'll, you'll see that you know, game engine technology can help you get there faster. So I run the enterprise team at Epic. We're fully committed to this, uh, to this industry and to non-gaming usage of the engine. And we're so committed that instead of being in Los Angeles partying with celebrities, uh, we are here with you today. Uh, we broke the internet yesterday with 2 million views of the Fortnite program tournament. Uh, it, was, uh, it was a blast. I'm very happy to be here with you uh, as well. What we're seeing is um, there is a, a very, very rapid adoption of, of real-time technology, of gaming technology, and that's sweeping across many, many industries, of course, in entertainment, in animation creation, but also in architecture and in manufacturing, in construction, and in many. And what I'm going to try to explain to you is why, is we have not invented real time. You know, real time has been around for a lot of time. But what really we're bringing to real time is real time without a sacrifice on the visual fidelity. So I want to first run you through a little bit of a echo back to you, the work that you guys are doing with Unreal Engine uh, through this very uh, rapid uh, uh, demo tape. All of that content is real time. There is no technical definition of real time, but what it means is it's interactive frame rates. Some is 24 frames per second. Some is 120 frames per second for VR, but basically every picture you've seen probably took a few milliseconds to render, probably less than 50 milliseconds to render anyway. Uh, that's a big change for the CG industry because we're used to wait minutes, if not hours, for this kind of content. Um, so, as I said, we're seeing massive adoption of uh, game engine technology into all of those Fortune 100 companies. And, and the big question often I get is why? You know, what's the relationship between game technology and those, those, those companies? Um, and the reason is, is you know, what, what do companies care about? They care about you know, great designs, you know, high quality design. They, they care about efficiency of manufacturing and construction. They care about brand identity. And they, they care about go to market strategy and time to market. And, and you'll see that game engine technology, interactive, interactive graphics, will help all of those companies actually achieve those business processes much faster. It's not, not, not about just the fancy pixels and the fancy graphics. It's about accelerating the proce acceleration of process. So 
Why? Because the enterprises used to communicate using text and drawings and documents and video. You have to think about a game engine as a, an engine that produces a new form of media. A form of media that is very efficient in communicating and can communicate very, very complex information. Media first that is live, it's instantaneous, it's, it's milliseconds. You get your renders when you need it. And that, that real-time aspect of it enables interactivity. Interactivity is fundamental to convey a lot of information. You know, of course, you can give the control to the user. You can, you can, do, you can do things like interactive walkthroughs, more efficient than lo looking at somebody else's point of view. You can add simulation. We have very good physics, but we'll see a lot of customers add their own simulation engine. You know, every night, virtual cars, you know, run millions of miles in Unreal Engine in the cloud to test autonomous driving capabilities. We're virtually all the, all of the uh, autonomous driving companies are using Unreal because we can do realistic rendering, stimulate the cameras, and do all of the sensor integration. Out of the box, when you use Game Engine to generate your media, you get media that, that's going to work on a lot of platforms. Of course, it's going, to, it's going to work on AR and VR platforms, it's going to run mobile, it's going to run in the cloud, it's going to run on PCs. And the support for immersivity is very important. I'll come back on that. The other aspect of it that people you know, don't think through, uh, don't realize about, about game engines, that they are natu naturally collaborative. All games now are multi-user, you know, our own game, Fortnite. You know, we announce having millions of concurrent users. We, we understand that technology, and it's actually built into the core. You know, it's a very uh, uh, native feature, the ability to actually share and collaborate in virtual spaces. And finally, it's all C++, the source code on the internet. You can connect it to a lot of, a lot of things. It's a very malleable uh, software environment. So that immersive interactive media, you know, that's, think of it as Unreal Engine, the codec of this new form of media. That is what those companies are adopting, because again, because of the efficiencies. There's another element which, Maybe not the case of your industry, but assets reuse is super important in manufacturing and in, in entertainment. You know, think about that digital twin. We, we, have, we work with customers in the manufacturing space. They create this virtually perfect digital twin of a car. It's a 3D model that has all the looks of the car, high visual fidelity, and all the behaviors. Push the button, the windows go up and down, the doors open, and all this. All of this is actually built into the model. And now with that, digital twin, what they can do is you can actually, you can actually generate all of the marketing deliverables of a campaign. You can, you know, the renderings are good enough to do synthetic photography. I was in Beijing a few weeks ago. Even the, the images in the press kit were actually done with, the, with Unreal Engine because the visual filter is good enough. So you can do the stills, you can do the commercial, you can do the video, you know, how to explain pedestrian detection, you know, that motion graphics video can all be done with that digital twin. Interactive applications, you know, the, the, the retail experience, the car configurator, the VR, you know, the super large scale projection at the launch event can also be done with the same model. And that's a revolution in cost. Because before, you know, before you had this digital twin that actually works across all these media forms, you actually had to take the CAD data and reconvert it every time. Pay for the conversion once for the still photography, pay the conversion another time for the commercials because every pipeline is different. So Unreal Engine br brings a shared language across all of those media devices, and again, with a level of visual fidelity that is very high. So that's a big game changer. It's also true in entertainment, where the same characters can be used in games, in VR, on television, in graphics, and into animation series. So those two aspects are actually fundamental and what's driving the momentum behind the technology. I don't need to convince you that you know, an interactive walkthrough is better you know, than watching a video in terms of engagement. We all compete for, uh, for attention. And so having content that is interactive and immersive drives that engagement. We've all heard about executives spending hours in your VR visualizations, you know, to kind of understand the spaces and, and, and really engage with the design much higher than you could do with a stills or a video. You guys doing it? Uh, you know, the, to the penetration rate of Unreal Engine already in, uh, in architecture is pretty high. And I think the, the difference uh, between Unreal Engine or a game engine and other technology is, as you can start to see, there is a little bit more to a game engine than real-time graphics. Sound, voice over IP, networking, multi-user, support for immersive environment, it's a full experience. 
architects spend a lot of time you know, designing a building with a meaning, with an inspiration. And those experiences, that's why it is, we see the option. It's, you, know, you can actually convey all of that uh, with a full experience that go much more than graphics. So we're, we're, um, we, we are really entering the experience era uh, with interactive technologies such as Unreal Engine. Um, another core concept is collaboration. Um, a lot of processes are, are, are collaborative, whether it's in construction or in manufacturing. A company like BMW has deployed 700, 700 VR headsets. And they routinely do you know, uh, collaborative design reviews between Germany and their design team in California in VR. They've taken it to notch. Uh, you've seen this, this, this setup here. They actually uh, they, they, they create a physicality to the virtual environment, like they put a wheel in front of you. You are sitting on, on a car seat so that you can actually experience the design of their future looking products. So when you, you, know, when, when, when you see in the virtual world a wheel and you put your hands in front of you, there is a wheel. And that, that element of immersion in reality helps you like, just focus on the design. You forget you're in VR, you're actually looking at the car. And they actually run their board members and do very important product decisions in VR uh, at BMW. A good example, you know, our friends at Nvidia have also uh, popularize this concept of the holodeck, you know, this virtual space environment uh, that can be used uh, to create, um, to, to do design reviews and, um, and collaboration. So we're starting to add those capabilities. You see measurements, uh, you know, you realize very quickly that once you've got a platform that is collaborative, immersive, and, and is, can understand your data, the, actually the features and the application that you need, there's not very much. And it's, it's pretty easy to do yourself or to do. And what I mean by immersion is not just HMDs. Uh, the version of Unreal Engine released last week, this is not a blurry picture, this is a stereoscopic picture. This is a stereoscopic cave, sorry. Picture doesn't do justice, but we have native support now for those large scale displays by clustering of content. So we're seeing a resurgence of the caves uh, because you know, LED panels are very cheap. So you can create, and I think the gentleman this morning make a very strong case that this is more efficient than getting isolating yourself under an HMD. So for example, we have native support for case in Unreal Engine um, as of 4.20 last week. And then, you know, the visual fidelity, um, it's, uh, we're gonna push one step further. I don't know how much you care about the core, the underlying technology, but uh, there is a technology called ray tracing that has actually brought a lot of ease of use and a lot of visual fidelity to the, to the architectural visualization world, to the world of movies. It's actually reaching game engine. So I'm gonna show you a, a piece that is done with real-time ray tracing uh, that was running at 24 frames per second. It's, it's an entertainment piece, you know, where the early days of the technology will, will come to you later this year with content that's more relevant for you. This, it's about Star Wars. Uh, so I'll show you the piece and I'll tell you after what you, what you have seen. Kylo Ren destroyed the one over in D Sector. If you ask me, who's ever in charge of this place should be transferred to Hoth. Uh -huh. What? So what you've seen here is real-time accurate reflections, uh, ambient, real-time ambient inclusion, uh, real-time soft shadows in less than 40 milliseconds per frame. Uh, that is technology that we are developing with NVIDIA. It'll be released later this year, and we think it's gonna have a big impact, not only because we can get much better fidelity, like we struggle with glass right now. I know for buildings it's very important. Uh, but also because it's gonna be so much easier to set up uh, sophisticated lighting. I want to show you another piece, which is what you can do today. This is what you will, this is 2019, 2018, uh, VR piece, 90 frames per second. Uh, our friends at, uh, this is Simon Shedebor, uh in New Zealand, our friends at Reality Virtual. 
So that is the steam experience you can get. That's 90 frames per second in Unreal Engine. So that's uh, photorealism at interactive frame rates. I mean, if you could have this quality, why would not you have it? I understand it's not mandatory all the time, but uh, this is a, a good uh, state of the art. So what I'm going to try to do in the, in the next few minutes is uh, look through some of the use cases we're seeing, particularly in AEC. Um, so start with the big A architecture. I mean, you, you've all seen architectural utilization. Um, I was in Korea a few weeks ago. Um, where I've seen companies having complete marketing system for buildings. In Korea, the buildings tend to be a lot of a cut and paste. Uh, they deploy touchscreen, VR experiences. This is all based from the Revit models. Uh, can con this is, this is a, a retail tool. They can configure the spaces. Um, actually, the, it's, it's a kind of a self-serve model. They bring customers in. Uh, customers actually uh, do all of this configuration by themselves. It's actually connected to the ERP system in the back end. You know, they use drones to make sure that you got the proper view from each uh, story in the building. That's kind of a, we've seen this everywhere, but it's, I found this uh, in Korea last week for Olymp Olymp Planet. It was probably one of the most advanced support VR, support large scale screens. Um, and it's kind of becoming a turnkey system. You can actually, if you're a real estate developer, you can get that template and you can get your building marketed uh, instantaneously. If you understand Korean, it confirms everything I just said, right? Um, the other part is, you know, uh, the, the, this is very powerful to can explain a, sp the, you know, a space uh, before it's actually built. You're used to that. I want to show you a, a piece done by uh, our friend of Soloist here. Uh, they are on the show floor. The work they did to Tottenham Spurs. Um, it's actually how you can use VR to market uh, your product. It's a very, very high quality piece. So Martin at Soloist, they do some of the most amazing work in terms of quality, and you can see it's all about the experience. Um, but now we're, we're bringing, uh, you know, just the, the, this notion of experience, we're bringing it to design. Uh, we, we have a partner in, in the UK here, uh, Google Collective. They do this uh, for car designer, which allows them to actually work in VR and not have to switch between, you know, creation mode and experience mode. And um, because model creation is such a, a tricky topic, and you guys, you know, there's a whole industry built around model creation. Uh, our strategy is not to reinvent model creation inside of Unreal, even though we have partners building lightweight beam applications inside of Unreal Engine. But for example, we work very closely with our friends in Trimble on SketchUp. You know, we, we do a lot of file-based workflows, but we're, we're starting to, to trend towards what we do in what we do in entertainment, which is live link-based workflows. We basically have somebody on SketchUp who's going to stream its geometry inside a virtual environment. And you can have multiple people on SketchUp in a collaborative environment streaming their geometry inside of Unreal Engine so that you can, you know, as a team with your stakeholders in VR or in a cave, immersively create you know, and visualize the space and experience the space while you create. Uh, we had a great presentation last week at Unreal Academy from Helmut Kinsler from the Hadid. And they're starting also to do a lot of collaborative 
immersive design. And especially in architecture, when you manage spaces, it is very natural uh, to use this technology. And the visual fidelity helps you understand the physicality of the space. So watch that. Uh, very happy to work with Trimble on that. And uh, we'll actually uh, do more uh, in terms of collaborative immersive design with partners on model creation. What about the E uh, in AEC? Um, I'm going to talk over this example of our friends from LMM, uh, MLM Group. There is a lot of value, uh, again, to get uh, your design um, uh, visualized interactively and immersively. So that's, that's data coming from Revit MEP. We currently have to bring this data through Max, uh, but we've announced this summer we're going to have direct connectivity from Revit to Unreal Engine through our data smith API. And what it means, you know, it's, it's going to be good for Revit architecture, but there's a lot of visualization solution already on Revit architecture. But for Revit structure and Revit MEP, it's going to be very interesting to take all of this data and the attached metadata, bring in, in an immersive collaborative environment, and do the, this kind of visualization, simulation, and training, and planning uh, that, that can be done. So we're, we're going to bring the value of that um, to the engineering space. And we've seen some application this morning that could very well live uh, inside of Unreal Engine. Once you've done your model, the VR comes for free, the interactivity comes for free. I mean, it's a very, very uh, powerful uh, set of tools. So thanks to our friends at MLM for uh, give us the, giving me that video. And the scene construction, um, we're starting, to, uh, we're starting to, uh, to get involved into a lot of projects. Uh, it goes from relatively simple visualization just to explain, you know, to understand the process, uh, whether you got vehicles involved or crane, uh, you see this very simple, it's not simple, but it's visualization. The, the value of that, it may not look that good, but it's, this is done in hours. You know, once you've got a technical artist that understands uh, the fundamentals of our, of our visual screen technology called Blueprint, uh, you can do these things very, very quickly in the platform. And once you've done that, it's, you can consume it in VR or mobile. Uh, we do a lot of work in the cloud now for streaming, so that on the construction side, you could be streaming this over the cloud. We work with Verizon on 5G. We work with a lot of partners so that you are in the ecosystem that delivers that platform support, that immersivity, that interactivity. Um, I want to finish with a, a shout out to our friends at Gilbane. Gilbane has a five person team uh, led by the gentleman called Lucas Richmond uh, in Minneapolis, and they did 115 projects, visualization projects last year with a team of five. This is one of them. They had to build over you know, a train track that was still live. I think it's actually a school they were building. And in three days, they were able to put this visualization together and work with the team and said, how are they going to do, go about building uh, that stuff? So it's, it's not an immediate technology. You need to get into it. But the productivity you get out of it when you are into it is actually uh, pretty mind boggling. I think it was four or five days. Uh, uh, from our friend at Gilbane. So we're starting more, more adoption of that. And if you had the model, think about the asset reuse, right? It's the Unreal Engine version, the digital version of the building is in Unreal. You can use it you know, to retail the building, but you can also use it to simulate the construction. You can aggregate all of this data in, uh, in all of the platforms. And so we have a dedicated team. Uh, Really, uh, what my team does, we focus on two things. We break barriers for you guys so that you can adopt. The first barrier is the workflow. So we have this data smith technology. It's basically about automating the process of importing that data, you know, that all of that data and that metadata that you, you guys create with your own uh, you know, model creation products. We have solved the problem of automatically bringing this into Unreal. That's called data smith. And the other thing that we do is we understand that immersive interactive content, it's new. It's new for us. It's new for everybody. So we have a massive investment around learning. It's called Unreal Academy. We run events all around the world. We're going to have one in the UK uh, at the end of the year. We have an online system so that that new technology can be easily uh, adopted, understood, and adopted by you guys because we see a lot of potential in there. And that is it for me. Thank you very much.